already the what is going on everybody it's your boy Sonny here bring you guys another Neverwinter video guys and it's been a while since I've uploaded a video I've been slacking but the finally the time has come I've upgraded my neck gear so I can now stream through twitch to make my videos at the appropriate uh, high speed without the uh, connection interrupting the lagging the the, the picture is going to be a lot better, and hopefully my voice is a lot better as well. But anyway, guys, today I'm bringing you guys my Oathbound Paladin build by the title of the video. Um, for this build, it is going to maximize your effectiveness as being a tank and as well as your buffs. So this video is going to be a little bit longer, but just bear with me because I'm going to go over everything in detail and why I do it and everything like that. And to show you guys that this class can still tank... Um, just a little disclaimer, this is towards the higher end gear score of people. Um, just to say that if you are below 3k probably, you're going to still have some problem tanking. Um, you're still going to have some problems tanking Orcus. But uh, this will put some light on the situation and point you in the right direction to where you guys want to go with this build. Now there is a couple different ways you can play this class. You can use the healed in, uh, which, is, which is good. Maybe if you guys want, I'll do a heal it and build, but it's just a completely different play style from the protection build. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. First things first, we're going to start with the attribute roll and the race. The race is hands down going to be the human um, for the purpose of the versatile defense as well as their heroic effort. Three extra feats, 3% higher defense than that of any other race. So two things that play pretty big in this build. Extra feats, more defense. In terms of how I got this roll, I started with a 13 Wisdom and Charisma and a 20 Constitution. Um, if you want the exact roll I have. If not, you can balance it to however you want. Maybe you want more uh, action point game. Maybe you want... Um, that's the highest Constitution you can get is a 20. But maybe you want less Constitution and more action point game so it's just kind of personal preference there but you want to keep uh, uh, maintained you know what I mean you want to have a high amount of hit points but not to where um, you want to have a high amount of action point game but not to where it's decreasing your head too much too much hit points you know in terms of gear for end game of course you want the vivified um, you're gonna want to go with the two piece well the full set but two separate pieces for your head and arms you're gonna go with the restoration Whereas your chest and boots, you're going to go with the ward. Personally, I prefer the stats from the ward for the chest and the feet. And vice versa for the restoration, the head and the arms are better. You get these three pieces right here from FBI runs. After many times farming it, you know, I finally got it. Um, and from the boots, you get them from the Brian Shawandar. For your left side, we'll go over the left and then the right. For the left, for your head, I got the Dragon Loyalist Vizad. That just gives me my power, armor, and hit points. That's quite a bit of, that's quite a decent stat. Pass that up. Plus, it's here for my um, arms and armor. I have the PvP gear. You can use Dragonfly. I do a little bit of PvP um, every here and there. Plus, the stats aren't too bad. That's why I use this. For the main hand and off hand, you're going to use the, ideally, you want the burning set. Um, I hear in mod 11 that the next set is going to be better for support so we'll see when it comes I haven't really looked into the next mod i'm trying to save my i don't want, I want to be surprised by everything that watched any new videos on it yet hear from people in the game that there's support um i'm rocking the drown set i just picked it up off the market um i can't make the burning set and a little bit more expensive and at the time i did not have the money but that's the set you want to go for because it has a chance to give you uh, some of your action gain after you have your action point. After you have used your daily, I should say, which is pretty amazing. For the utility slots, real quick, mostly darks. Um, you know, five darks would be ideal, but quartermasters are pretty good. But with the quartermasters, just make a higher percentage. Uh, uh, for your weapon artifact powers i don't have the artifact powers i want because i'm not keeping this so i'm not going to spend the money to get the cubes but you're going to use radiant strike for your main hand and for your off hand you're going to use the aurora of protection and the one that says locked is the one that gives you increase to stats so 400 and the action point gain one for your 
weapon enchantment, I got the Transcendent Frost. You can use the uh, uh, Terror, the Plague Fire, the Dread, the Lightning, a Touch, whatever you feel preference in. Whatever you feel using, it really doesn't matter. Um, being a tank, just send that debuffs the enemy. That's what I look forward to. For your armor enchantment, I would rock either the Negation or the Shadow Clad. Uh, whatever you prefer, kind of. But just the Shadow Clad uh, is when you make a Transcendent that you are just aware that every 30 seconds for 4 seconds you um, so you lose aggro for 4 seconds which is quite a while considering we're a tank and we really don't want to lose aggro like that so just be aware that at Transcendent Shadow Clad you lose aggro and being a tank we want to maintain control. for your offense and defense you want to radiance power and hit points I'll get into that I don't have full radiance um, and full, yeah, I just don't have full radiance yet. I'm just slacking on that department. Um, probably one day I'll just go in the Enclave and just swap my enchantments or radiance. I'm um, just slacking. For your artifacts, this is just what I have on me now. Nothing spectacular. I got the lantern, the uh, symbol of air, um, the token of traumatic storm, and the black ice beholder. Um, probably when the next double refinement drops, uh, I'll probably switch a couple of these out interchange them every once in a while I kind of like the lantern because of the it does to the enemies times people use the sigil of the devoted cleric for instance which isn't bad it really isn't uh, let me just move away from there in a second this is kind of loud um moving on to the right side oh wait before I move on to the left uh reinf reinforce with either points or power okay and uh, um, it's personal preference there. I prefer the hit points for the more survivability, but if you prefer the power, then stack the power. Okay, went over everything on the left side. Moving on to the right. For the neck and the waist, I have the Greater Imperial Dragon Cloak for the power crit recovery plus the increased action point gain. For my rings, I have the Ring of Rising Defects plus 5 and the Ring of Vitality plus 5. I have not yet gotten the plus 5 MSVA rings or the FBI rings yet. Plus 5, they're the same, but you know, I'm from. I have not yet gotten one yet, no matter how many times I've ran. But once I do get those, I'll probably switch them out. Um, pretty much whatever gives me recovery or power. Recovery and then a different stat is what I'll put here. Um, hopefully, I can get. Uh, Two offense and two defense, just like before, because <clears throat> it it uh weighs the cons and pros, but it's uh legend, so it gives you more item item. Plus, it looks cool when um you, you have all per uh, legendary things on you, makes you look uh gives you your better item level. And these with these rings are bound to account, which is pretty good. So when you do reinforce them, you can switch them between your characters. At 35% item level, uh, 35 points towards their item level, which is pretty cool. Um, that could be a difference between being 3k and being under that 35 points, and that could be a difference into getting into dungeons or not, depending on the group. Um, in terms of the waste, I got the Greater Lithander's Cloak for the Wisdom and Charisma, which is pretty good, plus the Power Recovery Defense. For my shirt and pants, I have the Greater Everfrost Chain Coat and the Greater Everfrost Pants. For the stat bonus that it gives you when your deflect is higher than your lifesteal, you do a certain amount of damage to your attacker that doesn't exceed 15% of your uh, HP, which my HP is quite a bit, so 15% is quite a bit of damage they're still taking. Uh, and it happens like seconds, I believe, right? Let me just double check. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, every 30 seconds. Moving on to my stats real quick, just to show you. Nothing spectacular. Um... As you can see, my defense is kind of low, so but don't worry. I'll get into that in a minute. That goes up tremendously. And my damage resistance is only 39%. Uh, deflect. Not bad, but it gets a lot better, trust me. Let's move on to powers. Now, I'm going to go through... Each one individual, so I'm going to be skipping around a little bit. For my at wills, I go with Radiant Strike for the increased damage in Armor Pen and uh, just increased damage. Um, it does not stack, so every once in a blue moon, I'll just use LT. But the main 
um, at will. We use the shield and strike. This gives us a shield uh, that lasts up to eight stacks, uh, eight seconds, sorry, and can last, um, and can stack up to three times. So these are going to be our two at will powers. So usually when I'm fighting something real quick, I'll show you. I'll smash the target. I'll run and smash him, and then just keep using shielding strike. And then, you know, every couple seconds or whatever after rotation or something like that, I will swap it. Uh, fight him real quick. Um, for my dailies, I use divine judgment, which is the big knife that comes down, and I will use shield of faith. Uh, Shield of Faith instead of Divine Protector anymore because Divine Protector it's just garbage. It doesn't last nearly as long as Shield of Faith. Plus Shield of Faith is really good um, with the feats and everything that I have. And for this build it's way better than the bubble, for instance. Um, since I said I do a little bit of PvP, when you do, do PvP I'm going to teach you guys that in a second but let's just get the PvE part out of the way real quick. For our, our coverages for our Aurora, sorry, not coverage. Our Aurora's, we use Aurora of Coverage, which increases our damage and the damage of our allies uh, by the, the number of hit points we have. So the more hit points we have, the more damage we and our allies do, which is pretty big. Um, so that's why it's important to stack as much hit points as possible. And the protection, that gives us damage resistance for our whole group. Instead of the Wisdom, the Wisdom is nice, but with the feats and everything, um, we, you know, we have a, a cooldown reduction off of that, so we really don't need this as much as this. And with those bigger dungeons, having damage resistance is really good. Especially, that can be the difference between getting one-shotted and getting two-shotted, for instance, with the rocks and everything. So, that's pretty big. Um, for your encounter powers, these swap around depending on the situation. But the big ones I use is Templar's Wrath, Bane, and all the way down at the bottom is a circle of power. When I'm running tier 1 and tier 2 dungeons, like Shores, Elo, Kessels, Temple of the Spiders, I'll switch out Circle of Power for Relentless Avenger. <clears throat> or, for instance, I will switch out to Burning Light, just depending on the group composition. When I'm running by myself, dailies, I'll use Sacred Weapon, Burning Light, or Relentless Avenger, and I will use Vow, just for the maximize my DPS when I'm running by myself just to get through things quicker so with this build you will be able to do your dailies no problem and I will use my knife pretty much all the time because the knife does quite a bit of DPS um, when you're doing PvP for instance you want to use uh, Val and you're gonna use Templar's Wrath still but you're gonna use Lay of Hands instead of Shield of Faith and this pretty much is Amazing. It can get you from pretty much no health to full health instantly. And you're also going to use... Where is it? I said Vow, Relentless Avenger, and Templar's Wrath. Um, if you feel you don't... Maybe you're running with a Cleric. That's good. Then you don't need the health. Then use Sacred Weapon. Sacred Weapon, good. So what you'll do is you'll pop Sacred Weapon. Then you'll throw your Vow. And then you'll hit him with Relentless Avenger, per se. And you'll take quite a bit of chunk of change from them. Depending on how squishy they are, you can probably one-shot somebody with this combo right there. Um, depending on how bad they are and what kind of gear they have on. Um, so that's it for that part. And doing PvP. Next, we're going to go over to the feats. This is where human plays a pretty big role in allowing you to put three extra feet points. It's pretty good for this build. Um, and you benefit from it big time over some of the other classes that cannot have three feats. Three extra fee points. So, real quick, divine action, toughness, exemplar's haste, light shield. This is where we put our three extra points. Uh, this increases our damage resistance to two percent um, per se, instead of not being able to take any more damage resistance. So, if you are not human, you may not want to put 0.5, which is kind of just garbage. You might want to put increase your crit chance for a little bit of DPS or raffle strikes. But you are going to take impassion. Please, divine call. This is your RB button, just in case you don't know what that is, or just by the name. That's your RB button. That increases your damage resistance as well as reduce the cooldowns of your encounter powers. I'll get into how that works in a second as well. And then Steadfast, 5 of 5, that's no brainer. Each point of Constitution gives us more hit points. Going on to the feet, real quick. 
just going to run through them, just show you, flash a light, this 25% uh, chance to reduce the cooldown of your nearby allies. You use our encounters quite a bit, so uh, we can pretty much keep our allies' encounters flowing pretty nicely. Um, Radiant Champion, when there are two or more allies by us, they gain 25% movement speed and 5% cooldown reduction. 30 feet is pretty close. Um, so right off the bat, so they move faster, 5% less cooldown from this alone, plus the flash of light, and you'll see flash of light come up uh, every time you use an encounter power. Echoes of light, this is where, um, this is just for us. Um, this can make, say we drop a circle of power, Templar's Wrath, it has a chance to reset its cooldown to the Predecessor. So say I use a circle of power, my Templar's Wrath could be ready, and vice versa like that. And we use Beacon of Hope. This plays really nice into the Shield of Faith. Um, every time we use it, we can randomly heal up the three allies and heal them for pretty much max health, which is pretty amazing. Um, with this feat and the Shielding of Faith, we can pretty much um, keep a constant heal. And it's like running with another Cleric pretty much when you're running with me because I can sometimes out-heal the Cleric, which is pretty good to see that I can tank heal and... You know, do all that other stuff, which is pretty nice. Gift the light, heal 10% more. That's good. That plays into fact uh, with this and the Shielding of Faith. Warriors Bastion, 10% more. Defense from equipment. Since we don't stack defense on ourselves, this is pretty nice to just get that extra bonus from it. Give us that damage resistance. And Aurora's of Gift. This is pretty nice. This We share 25% of our power. This is amazing for us. It's like having... Um, where I stand, I share about 5,000 roughly with my power where it is now, so that's better than a legendary mount. Uh, I started using the ball work, um, personally. If you use, maybe, if you're not as tanky, you might use this. If you're under 3k, you might um, use this one, but I prefer the sharing the power. Honestly, it's more beneficial to the team. Moving on to the boons. I don't have all the boons done. So, once I do, I don't know when I'll have them all done. I'm just probably going to wait. Maybe if they have a sale on the completion tokens, or when they drop a next double campaign currency. I'm kind of in no hurry, because the ones that I am missing, they're not too bad. Um, the only one that's a big one that I'm missing is Sharndar, but that's just because I'm lazy. I really don't feel like doing my dailies that much anymore. Um, control resist. Incoming healing. You probably want to take the um, Chill Determination, Glacial Strength, and either Chill of Winter probably. For Sharandar, I'm going to take the Power, the Crit, the Action Point Gain, the Elven Ferocity, and the Elvish Fury. Just because, like I said, we still want to be able to do... It's not a DPS build, but we still want to be able to do our thing. Um, and provide some DPS for the team, so we're not completely useless in that department. For Dread Ring, we're going to take the Power, the Regen, the Resistance Ignored, uh, the Enrage Regrowth, and the Rampaging Madness. For Icewind Dale, Combat Advantage, Stanima Gain, uh, Rapid Thaw, 400 Recovery. Probably want to take Cold Shoulder as well as Winter's Bounty. This plays good into our Action Point Gain. Underdark, we're going to take the power, the crit, the drow ambush tactics, as well as the dark one footing. This reduces the um, control effects, which is pretty nice. This next one, if you're having a problem taking Orcus, probably this one would be your better bet. 5% less damage to you by demons. And if you're not having a problem with Orcus, doing 10% more damage versus demons. For the tyranny of dragons, we're going to use 400 power, 400 deflect, 400 armor pen. We're going to take the regen over the lifesteal, and we're going to put all of our points, if you do have them, into a dragon rival, rival, rivalry. That's going to be 15% increase incoming healing. That plays into the um, lifesteal aspect, as well as getting those heals from the cleric, and as well as yourself. So the more, the longer you can stay alive, or stay alive the whole dungeon, the better off your whole team will be. Or your boons in your guild, if you have them, you're going to take the power, you're going to take the hit points over the defense. If you don't have the hit points boon, then of course you just take the defense boon, but you probably won't be doing as much damage with the courage as, you know, as well as somebody who does have the hit points boon. And utility and PvP don't matter if you need power points, XP, 
and you know I do a little bit of PvP, but uh, maybe this one. Um, Maze Engine, 400 incoming healing. Control effects are shorter. Action point gain is faster, and then this one is Discipline Faith. Uh, a nice shield when we get below 30% health. Um, that can be in a tight situation. That could be difference between life and death. That comes in handy a lot. Elemental evil, power, regen, recovery, and recovery right here. So we get about 1,400 recovery from these two boons alone. So that's why you want to complete your way all the way up to level 70 and complete those spinward rise and everything like that. Because you get 1,400 recovery off of this. Plus, you heal yourself for 24,000 hit points on a chance of taking damage, which is quite a bit. Um, in any circumstance, whether you PvP or PvE. Moving on to companions. I'm rocking the cheap companion. Um, it's a couple AD. The Abdir Shield Maiden. Okay. Now, why I use her over some of the other ones is because, first of all, three defense. And second... She has two rings and one waist. You rarely will you find a companion of three defense, two rings, and a waist. I have three de three friends companions, but two waists and one ring. Um, you know, the lion is pretty good, but he only has necks. So, to have the ability to have two rings and a waist is not bad. For our rings, we have the Scold, FBI rings, or MSVA, where you acquire them for. Um, either one. And we're going to put Silvery and Deep for Azure in there. This is our defense from and this is where we stack our recovery because where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck um, for them stats you cannot stack hit points on your companion which is kind of a, um, a downer if you could then it would be vice versa in that situation for just active bonuses this guy is pretty nice this increases our damage resistance up to 10% based on the percentage of damage you've taken so more damage resistance this is why um, everything that plays into effect my damage resistance is good when I have full buffed and everything like that. This guy is amazing to have. Increases your maximum hit points by 5%. That's just for that alone. Um, plus, he's not bad. Um, next is the Air Archon and the Ice Sprite. You can use any sprite, but this guy can be interchanged. You can use the Rust Monster. Um, some people use the Owl Bear for DPS. Uh, some people use the Siege Master. They use... The Liland, which is pretty good, um, give us more healing if you need it, which I might switch, but most definitely I'll probably get the Rust Monster. I'm just kind of a little short on AD at the moment because that's a nice debuff um, companion. In terms of mounts, this is big. This is where we get a lot of buffs as well. Equip power. This is the Flail Snail. This is the regular, um, I guess, because I think there's like two versions of it now out there. There's one with, that gives you a less percentage of your action point gain back. But this is the full one, 25% over 10 seconds. For your insignia bonuses, we're going to use Artifactor's Persuasion, Shepherd Devotion, Protector's Friendship, Wanderer's Fortune, and Protector's Commodity. Eventually, I'm going to use two Protector's Commodity because they do stack. But it's just I don't have a mount that has Protector's Commodity. Wanderer's Fortune, I s intertwine with Gladiator's... No way. Ah, oh, man. Oh, are you serious?